Hello there, and let's get to it. The media page is your primary interface for all your media management. Here you can ingest, organize, and clone your footage, as well as sync your sound and start taking the first few steps towards the three-point editing workflow. At the top you see there's a series of panels that I can hide or reveal just by clicking on them. So the media storage can be revealed and hidden, as well as expanded if I need more room. I have my clone tool my audio panel that can be displayed in both meters and waveforms which can also be expanded and contracted my metadata panel and my capture tool in case I want to use a film scanner or capture off magnetic videotape so let's take a look at the media storage panel first this is also referred to as the volume list because it lists all of the drives or volumes available on your workstation underneath that you have your favorites list this is where you can drag and drop directories that you use frequently. For example, I'm always coming back to my footage folder. So I can simply click and drag it across to favorites. And from now on, every time I need to open up a list of raw materials for my projects, I get it with a single click. You can also add things to your favorites by right clicking and selecting add folder to favorites. And you can remove favorites by right clicking and selecting remove folder from favorites. The viewer is dedicated only to showing you your source material and will in no way reflect what's happening in the edit itself. You have a few controls at the bottom of the viewer, so you can play, stop, play backwards, skip to the last frame or the first frame, or loop your video. You've also got a scrub icon that allows you to grab and scrub through your video. You can set in and out points either using the I and O shortcuts on your keyboard or the in and out indicators in the bottom right corner of the viewer. At the top you're able to indicate the size of the screen so I can view it at 100% of the original resolution or something much more or less. Selecting fit makes the image dynamic. That means that if I was to collapse some of my panels and to expand others, I'll find that the size of the image changes to fit this frame. Underneath that, you have one of the most important panels, and that is the media pool. Absolutely all of your media, whether it's video, audio, image-based, uh, visual effects, assets like mats, all has to go into the media pool in order to be utilized in any way inside of DaVinci Resolve. On the left-hand side, you have a folder or bin based representation of the assets that are currently inside your project. When I start importing my clips, they will all by default end up inside the master bin. You have the option of revealing or hiding your bin view in the top left corner of the media pool panel. And you can also start color tagging your bins in order to be able to filter them later on. Whenever I click on a clip, I reveal its individual metadata information in the metadata panel. At the top, I have uneditable information about the clip, including its name and file path location. Underneath that, you get additional clip details, which you can start changing if you want to. Any information entered inside of the metadata panel is automatically saved to the clip and will continue to be associated with it after you've finished working with the project. The last thing I want to look at is the audio panel. At the top you can see that there are two states in which you can review your audio. Inside of the meters, you can play back and review the levels of your footage. DaVinci Resolve supports a multitude of channel combinations, and inside of the meters panel alone allows you to preview 16 channels at the same time. The waveform mode doesn't show much until you activate an audio clip, after which it will allow you to synchronize it manually to a video. In the next few videos, we'll take a look at importing and organizing workflows. Thank you for watching, and I'll see you then.